Life Crew Podcast. Hey, and welcome to the podcast. My name is Jareth. And I'm Deborah. And we are the Full Life Crew. We are a husband and wife team, been married for 24 years, and we have eight children, and we run and drive an ice cream truck. A Tiki's Shaved Ice. And today we're hoping we sound a little bit better than... We should, because I got a new mic. For those of y'all that don't know, our podcast originally started in the closet. It did, on the floor. And then we eventually graduated to out of the closet. (laughs) And to the office. And we liked using the closet because we could hide from the kids. We could, but for some reason they always found us. Yeah. Um, but forever, we've only used one microphone. <clears throat> we did, and you were on one side, I was on the other side, and we just got real close. Yeah, so if you had coffee breath, I had to suffer. <laughs> hey, now. <laughs> what about you? So how was your weekend? You were busy? I was busy. You were extremely busy. You worked all weekend. Yep, you're working me to death. I am. I figured, you know, put you to work. You put me to work. <laughs> no, we, the Tiki's has really picked up in the fall. It does. In Louisiana, it's still 95 degrees during the day in yep. September. So a lot of people looking for their shaved ice. It was hot this weekend. It was hot. I mean, and, and the heat was, the heat's not the bad thing. It's the humidity. Yeah, the humidity will definitely get you. So, but yeah, you were busy. I was busy, just not as busy as you. I don't remember really seeing you this past weekend. I don't think we saw a lot of each other, no. no. You would come in, I would get your bag together to leave out, and you'd leave out. You'd come back home, and I would leave out to do something, and then I'd get back, and then you'd leave, and then I'd... One of the reasons we're able to do these podcasts is because our morning times don't consist of getting up and running to an office some, uh, usually because we're working late into the evening. Like Friday, I didn't get home to Friday? No. Saturday. Fr- Friday, we were no, pretty Thursday. good. Thursday, I didn't get home till like 10 or 11. And then Saturday, we started early that morning, and I did not get home till almost midnight. Yeah, it was about 11, and then you got home, and I left to go pick up Malia because she had a volleyball tournament this weekend, and they came home with the gold. They won, and so by the time I got home, it was close to midnight. All right, well, today we're going to be talking about a couple topics. As usual, this is our Just Stuff podcast, and Deborah has no idea what we're going to be discussing And I like it that way. I like to just surprise her. Because if I give her a script, she locks up. I like being surprised. Yes, she likes surprise. Before we jump into the topics today, if you like what we're doing and you want to support us, these podcasts do cost money. It's It's not a free or cheap venture. We are putting money, time, and effort into these. And if you want to support us, you can do a couple of ways. Obviously, you could like, share, comment on the actual podcast wherever you're listening to it. That's a big plus and that's free. But if you want to help us even more, you can visit our shop store right here at fulllifecrew.com forward slash save. And right here at the top, you'll see all our latest merch. This is Don't Say That Merch. This is something that Ava says, and we thought it was cute. So we're going to put it on a shirt, put it on a t-shirt. Also, we have the Upside app, and the Upside app has really been working for us. We go so much that we use the Upside app a lot for fuel in our car. And if you click on this big blue button right here, you will download the Upside app. And uh, use promo code AFF25 and you'll get an extra 25 cents a gallon on your first fill up. This free app right here has saved us um, over 100 bucks. I would have to say so, yeah. Between me and you combined, yes. If you're looking for insurance, we have we work with Insurify and they can get you a quote. They use many different brands from State Farm, Allstate, pretty much every major brand that you know. You can get a quote here. And they, they shop everybody at once. One of the things I hate about buying insurance is you got to call this person, call that person, this person. Insurify allows you to shop everybody's rate at once. So that's pretty neat. If you're looking to do some traveling over the holidays coming up, you can actually start paying for your travel right now. Uh, one travel allows you to pay for it in advance. Use nice. A firm. So if you, got, if you want to go on a trip, you can actually start paying for it today so you're not hit it all at one time. To me, that would be a great idea if you are planning on traveling through the holidays because you're going to have Christmas expenses, you're going to have extra expenses. So if you could start paying for your trip now, that would be a plus. Yeah, especially if you know where you're going and want to go at a certain date and time, this would be amazing. Plus, they have up to 75% off at one travel. Uh, you just click on this button, it'll bring you right to the site. And they have 70%. I saw they had flights from 
from Ve- to Vegas, I don't remember where it was from. You know, it was closer than us, but it was like twenty nine dollars. Oh wow! So that's great. We also uh, have this special deal with Columbia Sportswear, where you can get up to sixty percent off. And then we have a few others. If you're looking for a cell phone, we're we're hooked up with Gen Mobile. And if you're going to Disney, you or any other theme park, this would be a great one. This is called the Theme Park Hopper. Uh, this is called the Undercover Tourist, and uh, you can save, I want to say they almost give you one ticket for free if you buy multiple tickets, which who goes to Disney by themselves? I don't know. Uh, we also have Hurley right now if you're looking for a bikini, right? Mom, you need a bu- Ooh, bikini. bikini. Some of my most favorite days are out by the pool and, and you and your bikini. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you're looking for a vacation, we went. Uh, we, we were set up with Verbo, uh, VRBR, VRBO. And we rented that house down in Destin through VRBO, and that was a really nice trip. It was a nice trip. Very Every, nice trip. And everything was done on the phone. We didn't have to really meet or mingle with anybody. It was all done on the phone. We even checked in on the phone. Sure did. We checked in, we checked out, <clears throat> and it was amazing. But yeah, that's how you could support this podcast. Uh, share it, comment, like it, or you can shop any of our merch or any of the brands that support us. And that helps continue this if you do enjoy this podcast. Um, today, we're going to be talking about two things. The first one is this article here, but how about this? Let's get to the most apparent thing. The Trump assassination. Oh, wait, no. He didn't get assassinated. They tried again to get him. Yeah. That, to me, is just crazy. I mean, twice within like a month, month and a half. Why why do you think they want to? And, and, you know, I think I think that it says a lot that he's had two assassination attempts on him and the Democrat side has had none. I mean, it's just mind boggling. Like, I I don't even understand. Like, how can you have two so close together? It's, it's very interesting and it's very um, concerning. Why is there so much hatred to kill know. this man? I don't know. I mean, he's like out <clears throat> trying to have a nice Sunday afternoon golf game. Enjoy you know, some downtime and somebody tries to shoot him. Well, what my thing is, is, okay, so President Biden is the current president, but we haven't seen him a whole Right. Time. But how does President Biden actually affect you personally? How's he affecting you? I mean, personally, like, I don't, I mean, he's the president, but other than that, mm-hmm. I, I don't see the man. I don't know the man. He just runs the country. Yeah. My thing is, what what do you think makes a person that apparently this is his house in Hawaii? And what makes a person that lives in Hawaii, that lives like this, that drives this old beater of a truck? Oh, this guy was from Hawaii? Hawaii and then apparently the Carolinas. So, so North, how did North he... Carolina. But my, my, here's my question for you. What do you think possesses this gentleman that has no connection with Trump whatsoever other than Trump was the president for four years and he's running again for president? What would possess a person to look, potentially fly from, you know, thousands of miles away and then go out there to try to kill him? What has Trump personally done to this guy to make this guy think that, that this guy, like, I don't understand this. Like, I, there's a lot of people I don't like, but I, I mean, actually, I'm not going to go hunt them down. Like, this, there's a lot of intent in this. He had to travel. He had to, he had to spec it out. He had to do a lot of work. I mean, to me, and, and Trump doesn't know this guy. I, I honestly don't think Trump did anything personally toward this gentleman. Why do you think people... I think- Right now, there's just so much noise in the news coming from all angles of negativity and uh, a lot of, I believe, a lot of lies are being told, not just about one party, but another party. So I think there's just so much noise in the news that people just, ones that are angry already, I think just snap. But what possibly could Trump have done to this person personally to make him want to get a gun and hunt him down and go kill him? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I don't the think president, it's personal. President Biden, whether you like him or not, he hasn't personally done anything to us. His policies have caused a lot of things to rise. But I also think that's a combination of, you know, basic economic factors like everything shut down for a whole year so everything had to restart yeah so you were looking for things you couldn't get them so obviously the price is going to go up eventually when the market is stable again things prices will probably come back down you know now does the government cause inflation oh 100 percent, hell yes well yeah but what personally outside of that as, as did trump call the guy did he text the guy they say hey you suck i mean what possesses what do you think possesses a person to do this kind of act 
As I said, I don't think Trump did anything personally to this gentleman. I think the news, so much going on in the news, just like, because every time you turn on the news, from what I see across almost every news station is, you know, Trump, Trump, Trump. It's like there's something... You always hear the negative. And so if you listen to this all the time, and if you're already in a state of mind like, you know, this person, you know, he calls this or calls that. I mean, I think they snap. I just don't understand. This is a grown man. This is a 50 some odd year old man. And me personally, you know, I just don't get it. It just doesn't make sense to, you know, where did it fail in this man's life to where he figured he needed to get this is a picture of his little setup. Oh, yeah. That he had to travel across the country or travel, you know, several hundred miles to go and try to assassinate this man. What? I just, I just don't get it. I don't understand. So is there, is the man just crazy? And he believes that if Trump's president, like it's going to be so bad where he'd have to kill Trump? Is that, is Apparently that why? in this guy's mind, yes. Maybe he has a mental disorder of some sort to where he only believes one thing and then that that thing just grows and grows and grows to where he he's paranoid and is like this guy is gonna come for me what are people do you think it's drugs you think it's alcoholism what do you think would take a man of 58 years to this point in his life either he has to have something else going on in his life i'm just trying to figure it out i'm trying to put my head around so maybe he feels abandoned because right here it says that uh he's he was a very heavy democratic supporter and he supported the presidential campaign of uh, uh tulsi gabbard but now she supports trump maybe oh, yeah. he felt abandoned by by his uh, his party or something i don't know i'm just trying to figure out what possesses a 58 year old grown man to go postal is that that's all i want to know i want to know how i want to know what what did what did this man do in his life to get to this point because yeah. let's say let's say you don't like biden let's say you don't like trump let's say you don't like harris there's nothing that Let's say like I had just complete, utter disdain for one of the candidates. Yeah. It's never going to bring me to the point to where I'm going to go uh, plan an attack, set up shop, buy the rifles, and plan. I'm never going to do anything. Like, my brain would never, ever come to that conclusion. Okay, so I'm reading this article. So, the guy apparently has a history of weapons. So this isn't like new for him. This isn't like, okay, he's just out here being a little man. And then all of a sudden he comes in and says, ah, so it it says he has a history of like records show when he lived here, run-ins with the law in 2002, possession of weapons of mass destruction. Is that, is that the problem? And then down here, he was arrested three, he had a three hour standoff with police. Is that the problem? I mean, if you have that many trouble run-ins with the law, why are you not locked up? So apparently this man had some, some problems to begin with. And we keep letting, we keep letting him go. Yeah. So apparently he, he's had history with this and it's grown and grown and grown and he just gets angrier and angrier. And so then he escalates to the point of, Hey, I'm going to take this guy out. Somebody already got close enough to him the first time to graze him. So let me see if I can do it. That's a scary thought right there. So when you just said that, that just made me think how many other psychopaths, right? Because whether you're a Democrat or Republican, I don't think our president or leader should be shot at. Remember, um, our own, uh, Louisiana Senator, um, oh, what's his name? Um, Cassidy. Is that that his name? He got shot at a softball. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, what I find funny is that the Republicans are getting shot at, but nobody's shooting at the Democrat. I mean, that should tell you right there. Yeah. I don't care what the policies are. If you're going to go to the point where you're shooting at people, then I don't want to be associated. Yeah, it's just, it's, I'm, <clears throat> I don't know. It's, I think people I think are, if you're a Democrat right now and you're looking at this, you know, it's it looks bad on you and your party. It looks bad. It looks like you're a bunch of, and then... They're the ones always banging the walls about gun control. But who's the one shooting the guns at people? Yeah. I mean, come on. It's almost like hypocrisy on a grand scale. I don't know. I'm just trying to figure out what happened in this man's life to get him to this point to where another individual that's never, he's never going to meet this guy, never personally going to have an interaction with him would cause him to go and do something extremely personal. Yeah. I think it all has to go back to what his head is being filled with in the news. And then what you said is we had that, the first shooter Mm -hmm. and then that probably gave this guy the thought like, hey. Yeah. Somebody else already got close enough to I almost could, do it. So I could probably do it too. You know what? I think, so I mean. I, so now you have two of them that have almost taken him out. So what's next? Yeah. Either security is going to be super high to where you can't even get 20 miles from him or there's going to be another attempt. And then what, what does, 
what? Why are they trying to kill him? I mean, anyway, the only reason I wanted, I just wanted to get your thoughts and your opinions. What do you think, you know, makes something like this even possible for this guy? Why? How did he get to this point? Is it like bad parenting? You know, because because in the end, I really believe a lot of this stuff starts and at the house. At so I, I just wanted to get your perspective. Yeah, I think it all goes to everything that everybody's heads are being filled with. Well, the next topic I want to talk about is this. I found this kind of entertaining, and I thought you would too. And for people that live around here, that we have locals that listen to our channel, I thought this would be good and entertaining. So the the first thing that catches me is the title, right? Okay. So I'm going to read it in my most dramatic voice. Dramatic voice? Okay. Louisiana town. The canary <laughs> in the coal mine. As climate affects worse, you're all going to die. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that was very dramatic there. <laughs> <laughs> it says, Lake Charles has been battered by storms over the past 20 years, and now its most famous landmark lies in ruins. I don't know if our it's our famous most landmark? famous landmark. I, I, I'm going to have to say... Um, I don't know if it's a famous landmark. I do have to say it's something that you'd see when you travel down I-10. And I am curious. Here's the author, Sharon Sims. I want to know more about Shannon Sh Sims. Sh uh, is it Shannon or Shannon? Shannon? Okay. That's, oh, it just shows her. Her article. Or is it a guy? Shannon. Shannon could be a guy or a could girl. Could be a dude. I don't know. I'm I don't know. I was trying to find a picture of it. So what does this article say? Um, Let's go back. We got to go back. So I just, I, this, the title got me. So I'm scrolling and you know, our podcast is called Just Stuff. Yes. We have other podcasts, but this one's Just Stuff. And mm -hmm. I was scrolling through and this seemed to just kind of slap me in the head. Yeah. Cause we just, you and AJ just went and watched the implosion and we talked about it. I just like the title. But anyway, he, he, he made some made some statements down here um uh, last week one of southwest louisiana cities in particular was girding itself for hurricane francine below i, I don't think anybody was gird i mean it was a category maybe a category one maybe category two well it does say okay so the next next paragraph it does say you know lake charles has been very unlucky on hurricane pass which we have been we've I don't. I don't been think we've been se several. But I mean, if you live on the Gulf Coast, you know what's coming. You could move you know north, further north, yeah. and what's going to come if you if you move to like Arkansas or Missouri? What are you going to get? Just, you're, gonna, you're going to get tornadoes. Yeah. And if you move out west, you're going to get fires. Yes. So I mean, this is just in this particular where we live. This is what we get. We get hurricanes, and they come very peri periodic. It says the city's only skyscraper. The city's only skyscraper. <laughs> I don't even know if I call it a skyscraper. Has this guy ever been to our city? You know, is I don't know if he's from here or what, but. Yeah. Yeah. First of all, all we don't have skyscrapers in Lake Charles. Definitely not a skyscraper. And then, and then right here it says, uh, "Unfortunate." Okay. The let's just read this one. The city's only skyscraper, the Capital One Tower. It's the CM building, by the well, way. Well, we have another little tower. It's called the Chase Tower. And then that we have a government building that's pretty tall. Um, symbolizes Lake Charles' unfortunate unfortunate fate as the city has embraced Louisiana's oil and gas industry, even as climate crisis is causing increases increasingly wrecks havoc on it so he's blaming the oil and gas industry for climate change i guess he's i guess he doesn't understand what we do down here i mean we do make oil and gas but mm -hmm. the majority of our refineries are making something that is polymer plastic based yeah like we have one we have one refinery down here that Every time you get your bread, the plastic that goes around your bread, your loaf of bread, yeah, is made here. Uh, they do make a lot of plastics here. We have companies here that make plastics for cars and make paint for cars. So I mean, you, you know, he's like, you know, we've embraced this, but yet he's going down to the grocery store or she, I don't know who it is, mm -hmm. and buying food wrapped in plastic. Why don't you grow your own damn food and go pick it out the garden? Well. I don't I know, think but it's just uh, funny. Our, our skyscraper is gone. Our embracement of the oil and gas industry is also supplying your daily needs, Bubba or Bubette. <laughs> it is. It is. I just thought it was funny. Uh, oh, look, it talks about the city club. In 1990, in 1980, the members only city club was the ritzy restaurant on the tower's top floor where energy executives, yeah, through the energy executives. I, we went up there a uh, lot. Tippled martinis and sliced into fillets during lunch? I'd say supper, maybe not lunch. Energy. How many times did you go up there and there was these energy tycoons <laughs> in the restaurant? I mean, it was more local small business owners. It was. It I was. I mean, guys that manage these plants and stuff would go there occasionally, but most of the time it was small business. Owners. It was. It, it, it was. And it was a nice restaurant. It was probably <laughs> the nicest one, but I don't, I wouldn't say it's a Las Vegas 
um, yeah. restaurant, anything like that, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what else? He said something else. Let's see. He talked about, he said, I read, a, anyway, I don't know. I just thought this was entertaining, the way he wrote his article. And it's almost like he tried to pin the hurricanes on, it's almost like he was saying, oh, you have all this oil and gas industry, so you got what you deserve by the oh, hurricane yeah. and the climate change. Yeah, see, I didn't read the article, so yeah, this is kind of the way he the way he writes it. So, gotcha. like the destruction of this tower is the symbolism of climate catastrophe brought on by your own selfishness with your oil and gas industry. I would have to say <laughs> the destruction or implosion of the CM towers due to hurricanes that have hit us. Yeah, I would think a more important Which question. Which he is, will probably go back and say, okay, the hurricanes. Are calls because of your oil and gas and climate control. That's that's he doesn't actually say that, but that's what he's that's what he's for that's what he's basically trying to say. Gotcha. Okay. That, that's his that's his motive or uh, her motive. I don't know who is it Shannon or Sharon. It says Shannon, Shannon Sims. I don't know. I don't know who they are Never or this person, them. but canary I, in the coal mine. Canary in the coal mine. I mean, just a topic. Let's, baffling as climate effects worsen how about how about you know you live on the coast there's hurricanes there, right yeah why why did you build a giant glass building that would be a more important that is true you know because there's well, other there's other buildings that are here and they've been hit by many more hurricanes because this building was not as old as some of the other buildings downtown and they've been around forever yeah so i so maybe, maybe it's not maybe it's not climate change maybe it's uh Poor decision making, like, hey, let's build a giant glass structure in a hurricane zone. That is true. Um, and maybe they, I know when you build something like that, maybe they wasn't thinking, oh, we're going to have these huge hurricanes come through, which I'm sure they did, but you're right. Why would they build a glass building in Hurricane Central? Yeah. And and, and then he makes it almost sound like, like Charles is battered and suffered because of hurricanes. Lake Charles has had hurricanes since it was in, in his inception. What is different is the insurance companies and their love of their money and not wanting to take care of the customer. Yeah. That is the biggest difference. Because in, in 2005, when Rita hit, Rita hit, and it was just as nasty as Laura. It's about every 15, 20 years, you get a direct hit with an eye wall and it's nasty. Because the one that just passed was only two hours from here and it didn't even rain. Yeah. We, we were on the west side, so we got, it was nice. Yeah. And they and, and if you watch the the Weather Channel, you watch the news. You know every time you see a hurricane, like we, the hurricane, the, this past one was Francine. Like it passed us within two hours, and the only place that got really beat up was the place that it covered. It went through. Yeah. And it wasn't terrible, but it wasn't good, but it wasn't terrible. But if you live here, you expect that. You you know that's coming. Yeah, you know it's a hurricane, whether it be a one, a two. You're you're still preparing and expecting there will be some damage yeah but i don't think sasol and louisiana pigment and axial i don't think that the hurricane's like oh i must go back there because <laughs> they are the ones that form me with all their you know pollution and natural you know i don't know <laughs> and i i can't i can't tell you that if anything they're actually doing a better job than they did back years ago well, what are your thoughts on the canary and the I do not think the implosion of the CM Tower is due to climate control issues no. or the gas and oil industry. I think it was demolished due to it was damaged so severely during the hurricane. And then it's, it's made of glass. It's made of glass. <laughs> and then, like you said, they had some issues with getting the insurance, insurance. company yeah. to cover it. What if the insurance company would have paid the bill to fix it up? Then it probably would have been fixed. Yeah. So is the problem hurricanes? Is the problem climate change? Or is the problem people? I mean, the, the guy trying to kill Trump, that ain't a climate issue. That's a people problem. Yeah. The reason this tower really came down, yeah, it was damaged. There's a lot of damage because the insurance didn't pay. You're buying insurance to cover your losses. You have so many losses where they say, oh, well, it was too much. So we're, it's to, it's a total loss. Well, yeah. then you, you tear the building down. And then, and then you pay insurance every month, which is through the roof, not just in Louisiana anymore, but everywhere from what I hear. So I'm not, you know, it's just one of them things. I just like it. I just love his title. Like I was scrolling through <laughs> and I was like, this would be great for our podcast because the Louisiana town, the canary in the coal mine. <laughs> it's like, this is how you know that the climate is, you're fixing to die because the climate is. <laughs> eh, I'm going to pass on that one. I don't know. I, 
I <laughs> I think it's funny. We are in a battle. A lot of people don't know that if you don't live down in the South or you don't live where it's warm and hot, you, you don't know about this battle. If you live in a city and all you see is concrete and buildings, you're oblivious to what happened. If I don't mow that grass every week, you will no longer see my house in six. That is the truth. Matter of fact, we I, were driving, we were going to DeRitter to do a Tiki's event. We passed the old roller rink in De Quincey and it's basically gone, not because it fell down, but because Mother Nature is taking it back. It is. The grass has grown up. The The plants are growing through the roof, <laughs> the walls. It's just... I mean, if you really think about it, the hotter and wetter it gets, guess what happens? Does plants thrive or grow or do they die? No, oh, they grow. Yeah, I mean, So let's say you believe the whole climate deal and let's say humans are affecting climate change. But at the same time, what is Earth going to do? It's going to respond. So you're going to have more trees growing, more grass growing, more more of nature happening. I mean, what does the things grow in the winter? They grow in the summer and the spring. Uh, summer and spring. So if the whole world is warming up a little bit, right? You're going to have more growth. And what do, what do plants and trees produce? Do they produce oxygen or carbon dioxide? Oxygen. Yeah. So, and what do they consume? Carbon dioxide. So if anything, Earth is responding here and doing her job to sustain life on this pre- on this planet. And I, I just I just find this whole thing mind boat. I think it's just just a way to scare people. You notice even It's a good title though. Even it made Trump, you click on it. Even Trump is talking about World War Three. I think that the best way to sell people is through fear. They fear. trying to sell people through fear, through fear, through fear. Well that's what I said. I think the news plays a lot into what is happening these days. So you should probably turn off the news and just listen to the Just Stuff podcast. Yes, I think you're right. It's fun and exciting on this podcast. No. It yeah, it is. No. You're having fun? Well, we don't really, we're not negative. You turn on the news, a lot of time. there's a lot of negativity. Every now and then, they'll throw in a good positive story that's happened out there somewhere. Yeah, that is true. Everything you watch is negative, negative, negative. So if you watch Welcome the news all day, all you see is negative podcast. stuff. It's pretty positive you're going to be a negative person. Yeah, I mean, you listen to negative stuff. Start thinking negative stuff. You think that? that hey, welcome to the podcast. This is Jareth, and I'm Deborah. Thank We're the Full Life Crew, and today we Trump? are on our podcast Trump? Just Stuff. We have a couple, we the couple podcasts. We've got some on parenting, well, some on motivation for Trump. kids. But I think uh, we've done several podcasts. But this one we thought would be more fun if you just got to experience some of the conversations we have. Speech As a couple whatever, that that's been married for 24 years and we have and just can't eight children, there's always an event or something happening. And so we figured we share that. Our goal today is to edutain you. That's right, that's edutain you. Like, maybe you pick up a little education. This, maybe you pick up a little entertainment. Is gonna be, and that's yeah, what believe. you're going to like this one because everybody that has kids... I mean, this happens at the beginning of school. Yeah, before we jump on that, though, and we talk about our topic today, if you like what we're doing and you want to support this effort and you like this podcast, go to fulllifecrew.com forward slash save. And for you, there is a benefit, and the benefit is saving cash. Yes. Today's a code. You need to save cash. Yes, we have several coupons. And if you go there, you can find them. Especially if you get gas, there's especially one for you. There. There's really nothing personal. We've saved lots of money with Trump it, so go that check that it out. Make him, there's nothing personal. Yeah, he upside. could be the president. Yeah. yeah, he could affect your life a little bit through his policies. <laughs> but personally, I don't know. You, you know, okay today? Personal. You having a good morning? I am. Did having you get all your coffee in? I'm having a great morning, morning actually. Yeah, I don't know. Something feels off today. I don't know what it is. Baseball. I don't know either. I'm not gonna. You know what it is? I gave you five bullet points, and you can't take your eyes off the paper. Actually, I haven't looked at the paper again. How about look? How about this? Give me the paper. I don't think they're going to come knock on because your door. Perfect. One of the reasons for this podcast is because they're going to do that. our conversations yeah, I, I don't know why someone would get to that point to where they, they feel so personally connected. Yes, but you gave me a sheet of paper. And, and when I give you bullet points, someone, you just want to run. Get you remind me of like and this guy, going to the grocery store or shopping. Like you just right got to get to the his house or something. So take care of it. Sometimes when like eight kids, like you got to be on point. You know, I was on point trying to do these. <laughs> but you know, it, it doesn't work for me. So let, let's. So just just to give an update of what's going on in our life, we are back in school. Kids are. Back